Well, hi everyone. This is for my friends down under in Australia. I'm going to take you step by step and show you how to register a limited liability company in Australia. And it's going to work just almost like probably exactly like a New Mexico LLC or pretty much any LLC in the States. The only exception is that uh, it's going to, there's a little more formality in, in Australia, but it's no big deal. Um, you can avoid some of the tax numbers. There is one tax number that we have to get, but that's part of the process. And you can use it for the same exact purposes that I describe in all my videos from based on my research here. So this is going to work out pretty good. Um, if you have a, an LLC already in the States and you want to domesticate it in Australia, the easier way to do it, I think, is to just register a new company in Australia that is uh, under the same name as whatever LLC you're using in the States. The way it's called, uh, the way it's referred to in Australia is a um, proprietary company, okay? Or a proprietary limited company. That's an LLC. And the designation there is not LLC. It's gonna be PTY. So not much difference there. <clears throat> so let me flip over and um, I'm gonna share my screen here. All right. So you see here, before I even started this, I just went and, and I'd recommend this to anyone. I mean, I do this, I've done thousands of these. I, I always do it like this. So I go and I set up uh, the details. And I could tell you that, <clears throat> okay, there's a couple more items I wasn't aware of. So anyways, I went ahead and I created this file. I called myself the director, called myself the agent. I created a private membership association, which is gonna be really useful for, the, for you guys down there. And I got this address here. I'm gonna show you where I got that, how I got it. You don't need to do it like that. You can just use your home address or your actual office address. I, I don't live there. I don't have anything over there. So I had to do it this way and I'll show you how. Um, then there's a residential address and then I gave myself a date of birth. <clears throat> I just made that up, made myself younger. And then um, there's an ID. So what I had to do first is I'm gonna show you just right now. I had to create a user ID and a password so that I can um, access their uh, registering process. So if I flip over here, you'll see I go to this website, register.business.gov.au. So when you go there, you just register a company. Okay, you click on this link here and my computer's kind of slow, but anyways, um, it's gonna be, okay. So it's gonna be an Australian company and company name. That's what I was forming here. So I'm telling, the website, I'm going to do, be doing this thing and I have to register. So it's going to say, fine. Um, I don't need all these things here. I don't need the GST. I don't need any of that. I can just ignore all that. <clears throat> don't need to apply for tax registration. Do not need an ABN. And then we go next and you'll get your account open. Okay. So when you get your account open, uh, you're, it's going to look like this. Now, let me just start from the end and go backwards. This is how I want to do it today. So I've got some step-by-step -step. once I did this, uh, then I collected this, these steps here. So let me just take you to the actual website. This is after I've completed all the steps that I'm going to show you. So you see, I'm given a summary. So I've, I've gone through this where I select the registration, getting started, business name, company details. All I'm doing here is just entering really this information. Okay. So anyways, uh, you can see I've, I've been given a summary. Now let me explain something to you. The PTY Limited is the proprietary limited company. This is your LLC in Australia. <clears throat> the ACN is a tax number, and I don't remember what ACN stands for. I'm sorry, it almost doesn't matter. Um, because here's what I did. As I was registering, I, I selected the option to not choose a name for the company, and it defaulted to the ACN. So whatever number is being assigned by, this, by uh, your government is gonna be considered the company name. You could just do that because that name is going to be fine. You can operate under whatever business name, trade name, trademark, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the actual name of the registered company. It's interesting because I've never seen anyone understand that. I've never seen anyone recognize that fact. Um, for example, I can register a company under any name I want. That doesn't have to be the name of the business that I interact with the public with or whomever. So in any case, I get to, um, look through here, I can edit whatever I had typed in. So again, this is the end of what I'm registered, when I've registered everything. It's a private company. It's limited by shares. Okay, there you go. The subclass is proprietary limited. Okay, um, what name did I use? Well, like I just said, it was the ACN, okay? Of course, it's available. It's a unique number, that makes it easy. And okay, so 
I got a uh, an address. So here's how I did that. Just like I do in the States, I actually went and searched on the internet for office space for lease. And I picked Sydney, Australia, because that was the first uh, name that came to my mind. You guys would probably pick New York, right? So I'm going to pick Sydney, Australia. And uh, I just grabbed this address. Okay. Went back here. And what I did actually is I put it in this file here. So now I have it. I did the same thing for the residential address. I went and just searched on um, residential address in Sydney, New South Wales, New, so New South Wales, Sydney. And I, I got this address. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I look for an apartment address. I like to use apartments because I can name the apartment complex and it's a real residential and it never identifies an individual unit or someone's place. So that's just one of the things I like to, I like to do it that way. That's my style. So you can do it however you want. All right. So I'm going through this. It's in the state or territory of New South Wales. Um, it's under ultimate holding company. I picked yes. Now I called my PMA, which is going to be key here because everyone talks about offshore companies. When you're using a PMA, it has the same effectiveness without all the scrutiny. You're going to see how this works. So I chose the Coral Reef Society PMA. It's asking me now, where's the place of incorporation? Well, it's a private membership association. Now I don't know if they're going to come back and say, now that's not good enough. Let's just find out. We'll wait and see. I mean, if we read, I didn't register this by the way. So uh, we, we should be fine. <clears throat> so yeah, this organization exists and doesn't really have a nationality until I say, tell somebody what it is or use an address for it. I think it's gonna be effective here. And then the principal place of business is the same. That way they don't ask more questions and it's an occupied. Yeah, if it's not occupied, I have to get permission regarding that address from somebody and we're not gonna do that now. In your cases, you may do that. In my case, not. All right. I made myself the director. That's my name. Place of birth. Make things simple. Date of birth. Here's that residential address I was telling you. Role as a shareholder. Here's the shareholder. Now, you're the shareholder? No, that means you have no liability. However, you have all the control. That's really cool. It's exactly what we do for LLCs here in the States. Been doing it that way since the 90s. So here you go. This is what you do for Australia. That's the business address I found. Okay, <clears throat> the share or class type of stock is a founders. That makes sense, all right? The PMA founded it. It's the organizer. I just made up a number, dollars, $100, okay? So let me back up a little bit. Company details, my, my computer's kind of slow, but I'm gonna back up. So you see how it's asking all this information? Easy stuff, really. I used my email address. You see, yes, yes. The company occupies the address. Then th that way they ask less questions. I'm gonna go back up another step. Business name, okay? It's the number being assigned. See, see you, get a, you get an option here. Use the ACN. Australian company number, okay, ACN. So, go back to this step. And that's what it is. It's a proprietary private company. All right. Not a public company. It's not a home unit. It's not a not for profit, for profit because if you say not for, not for profit, what you got to qualify, right? You probably have another series of questions you got to answer. This is a proprietary limited company. I don't know that I would do a superannuation trustee because again, you may have to come up with some sort of instrument. Now, when I went through this process, instead of uploading my own constitution or articles, I just went with the government's default terms of an LLC or proprietary limited company. I'm sure I can change them later. I know I can change them later. All I have to do is write my articles the way I want and I can upload them. But I think most of what you guys care about is the fact that you're not the owner of the stock, okay? So let's go back to, let's see the first one. Yeah, so like you guys have already seen, here we go from the beginning. So that if I wanted to, you know, I just go through, let's see, notice how there's a reference number assigned here. Um, notice how I have an account with them, okay? Um, so let's see if I can, 
What is this? It's telling me what type of information I'm going to be needing. I don't, I mean, this kind of took care of itself. I didn't really pay too much attention to that. So I'm going to work my way back to the last step. Save and continue. So this is saved in my account. If I wanted to go log in again, I could just go to this um, website here. What is it? This one here. Log in again and uh, resume my formation of the company. So next. And here are the fees. Uh, in this case, whatever I registered, the way I'm showing you how to do this was $512. It's a little high, but hey, should be all right. It's going to pay off. So, okay, that's to begin the process again. So let me just go, the step, go over the steps. Now I have this file here. It's a proprietary company. It's a PTY. PTY, I think LTD sometimes. The subtype is LTD, limited. So that's why you might see it as PTY LTD sometimes. See, I, cho I chose to use the ACN as the company name. And then I picked, um, you know, pick your state. I mean, I picked New South Wales, uh, I picked Sydney, and then I chose yes. Will the company occupy the address? Yeah. Is the main place of business? Yeah. Uh, is it a holding company? Yeah. N then no for not registered in Australia. That had to do with the PMA they accepted it. So, so far, I mean, the software accepted it. So the PMA is this. So I listed this as you saw there as the shareholder, the sole shareholder. And uh, that's it. It's that type of the, sh it's a type of share where I called founder share. There's like 20 different kinds of shares. You just need founder shares. That's going to be fine. You can give a dollar amount. A reasonable amount is a hundred dollars. Really, if I'm really doing a company, it's probably going to be like a hundred thousand dollars or $10 million, right? If I have real partners and things like that. So, or if you're just getting started, this is fine. It is not beneficially held. So I don't want, I'm, I'm imagining that if I say it is, I'm going to have to talk about who is a beneficial holder other than who I disclosed here. So I want to limit the amount of questions I got to answer to get this thing registered. Remember, all we're really trying to do is get to the bank. And we're also trying to, we're trying to get a vehicle that we can use to go do our banking. And we're also trying to make it to where the thing we're using is not going to have duties like filing returns and things like that. So far, I don't see that that is the case here. If you're doing this, I believe it's going to work just like in the States, okay, where we don't file a return at all. And, and I should add that that's, we're doing that legally. I'm not tricking anything. I'm, we're not tricking anyone or tricking the system. And then cho uh, choose to allocate shares, uh, shares, sorry, choose uh, how to allocate shares, then save and continue. So <clears throat> when you select choose how to allocate shares, you just allocate it to the PMA. That's it's very easy there. And so that's it. I mean, that shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes, maybe five minutes. All right, so that is how you register it. How we interact with the bank, I don't know yet. I believe we should be just fine doing it the same way we're doing it. We're probably going to need some kind of copy of the articles from the, the state or the province or the territory. Uh, I believe the bank will probably accept a, un, an unofficial copy of the certified copy. If not, I'm sure you can order one very easily and get a certified copy. So um, great. Um, I'm sure we'll have to do a follow-up and I invite any questions. Hope this helps.